Brought to you by wikivd.com Pocahontas Pocahontas was a Native American woman notable for her association with the colonial settlement at Jamestown, Virginia. Pocahontas was the daughter of Powhatan, the paramount chief of the network of tributary tribal nations in the Zenicomaca, encompassing the Tidewater region of Virginia. In a well-known historical anecdote she is said to have saved the life of a captive of the Native Americans the Englishman John Smith in 1607 by placing her head upon his own when her father raised his war club to execute him. Some historians have suggested that this story is told by Smith is untrue. Pocahontas was captured by the English during Anglo-Indian hostilities in 1613 and held for ransom. During her captivity she converted to Christianity and took the name Rebecca. When the opportunity arose for her to return to her people she chose to remain with the English. In April 1614 she married tobacco planter John Rolfe and in January 1615 bore their son, Thomas Rolfe. In 1616 the Rolfes travelled to London. Pocahontas was presented to English society as an example of the civilized savage in hopes of stimulating investment in the Jamestown settlement. She became something of a celebrity was elegantly fated and attended a mask at Whitehall Palace. In 1617 the Rolf set sail for Virginia, but Pocahontas died at Gravesend of unknown causes. She was buried in St. George Church. Gravesend in England but the exact location of her grave is unknown, as the church has been rebuilt. Numerous places landmarks and products in the United States have been named after Pocahontas. Her story has been romanticized over the years and she is a subject of art literature and film. Many famous people have claimed to be among her descendants through her son Thomas including members of the First Families of Virginia First Lady Edith Wilson, American Western actor Glenn Strange Las Vegas performer Wayne Newton, and astronomer Percival Lowell. Early life Pocahontas' birth year is unknown but some historians estimate it to have been around 1596. In A True Relation of Virginia, Smith described the Pocahontas he met in the spring of 1608 as being a child of ten years old. In a letter written in 1616 he again described her as she was in 1608 but this time as a child of 12 or 13 years of age. Pocahontas was the daughter of Powhatan, paramount chief of Zenicomaca in alliance of about 30 Algonquin-speaking groups and petty chiefdoms in Tidewater, Virginia. Her mother's name and origins are unknown, but she was probably of lowly status. The colonist Henry Spellman, who had lived among the Powhatan as an interpreter noted that, when one of the paramount chief's many wives gave birth to a child the mother was returned to her place of origin to be supported there by the paramount chief until she found another husband. In the traditional histories of the Powhatan Pocahontas' mother died in childbirth. Pocahontas' childhood was probably little different from that of most girls who lived in Zenicomaca. She learned how to perform what was considered to be women's work which included foraging for food and firewood farming and searching for the plant materials used in building thatched houses. As she grew older, she helped other members of Pofartan's household with preparations for large feasts. Serving feasts, such as the one presented to John Smith after his capture, was a regular obligation of the Mamanato worker paramount chief. Names At the time Pocahontas was born it was common for Powhatan Native Americans to be given several personal names have more than one name at the same time, have secret names that only a select few knew and to change their names on important occasions. Bestowed at different times the names carried different meanings and might be used in different contexts. Pocahontas was no different 
Early in her life she was given a secret name Matoaka but later she was also known as Amonute. Matoaka means bright stream between the hills. Amonute cannot be translated. The name Pocahontas was a childhood nickname that probably referred to her frolicsome nature. According to the colonist William Strachey it meant little wanton, some interpret the meaning as playful one. The 18th-century historian William Stith claimed that her real name it seems was originally Matoax which the Indians carefully concealed from the English and changed it to Pocahontas out of a superstitious fear lest they by the knowledge of her true name should be enabled to do her some hurt. According to the anthropologist Helen C. Rountree, Pocahontas revealed her secret name to the English only after she had taken another religious baptismal name Rebecca. Pocahontas' Christian name Rebecca may have been a symbolic gesture to Rebecca of the Book of Genesis who was the mother of Jacob and Esau was the mother of two nations a distinct peoples. Pocahontas as a power tan marrying an Englishman may have been seen by herself and by her contemporaries as being also potentially a matriarchal figure of two distinct peoples. Title and status Pocahontas has been considered in popular culture to be a princess. In 1841, William Watson Waldron of Trinity College Dublin in Ireland published Pocahontas, American Princess, and other poems calling Pocahontas the beloved, an only surviving daughter of the king. Indeed, Pocahontas was a favorite of her father's, his, delight and darling according to the colonist Captain Ralph Hammore, but she was not in line to inherit a position as a Wayroan's sub-chair for Mamanato work. Instead, Pofartin's bros, sisters, and his sister's children all stood in line to succeed him. In his A Map of Virginia, John Smith explained how matrilineal inheritance worked among the Pofartans. John Smith Pocahontas is most famously linked to the English colonist Captain John Smith who arrived in Virginia with a hundred other settlers in April 1607, at the behest of the London Company. After building a fort on a marshy peninsula poking out into the James River, the Englishmen had numerous encounters over the next several months, with the natives of Zenicomaca some of them friendly some hostile. Then in December the 1607, while exploring on the Chickahomery River Smith was captured by a hunting party led by Pofartin's younger brother A.P. Shonsena and brought to Pofartin's capital at Werewokamoko. In his 1608 account Smith describes a great feast followed by a long talk with Powhatan. He does not mention Pocahontas in relation to his capture, and claims that they first met some months later. Huber understands the meeting of Smith and Powhatan as the latter's attempt to bring Smith and so the English into his chiefdom. Powhatan offered Smith rule of the town of Capahosic, which was close to Pofartan's capital at Werewokamoko. The paramount chief thus hoped to keep Smith and his men nearby and better under control. In 1616 Smith wrote a letter to Queen Anne in anticipation of Pocahontas' visit to England. In this new account, his capture included the threat of his own death, at the minute of my execution he wrote. She, Pocahontas, hazarded the beating out of her own brains to save mine, and not only that, but so prevailed with her father that I was safely conducted to Jamestown. In his 1624, published long after the death of Pocahontas Smith expanded the story. Writing about himself in the third person he explained that after he was captured and taken to the paramount chief, two great stones were brought before Powhatan, then as many as could laid hands on him, Smith dragged him to them and thereon laid his head and being ready with their clubs to be utter out his brains Pocahontas the king's dearest daughter when no entreaty could prevail, got his head in her arms and laid her own upon his to save him from death. 
In a later publication True Travels, Smith claimed a similar rescue by another young girl in 1602, following his capture by Turks in Hungary. The story resembles a popular contemporary type of moral tale, in which a Christian hero maintains his faith despite threats and intimidation. Karen Ordell Kupperman suggests that Smith used such details to embroider his first account, thus producing a more dramatic second account of his encounter with Pocahontas as a heroine worthy of reception by Queen Anne. Its later revision and publication was probably an attempt to raise his own stock and reputation. He had long since fallen from favor with the company that had funded the Jamestown Enterprise. Gleach, drawing on substantial ethno-history suggests that Smith's second account, while substantially accurate, represents his misunderstanding of a three-stage ritual intended to adopt Smith as representative of the English colony into the Confederacy. But not all writers are convinced, some suggesting the absence of certain corroborating evidence. Early histories did establish that Pocahontas befriended Smith and the Jamestown colony. Pocahontas often went to the settlement and played games with the boys there. When the colonists were starving every once in four or five days, Pocahontas with her attendants brought him, Smith, so much provision that saved many of the lives that else. For all this had starved with hunger. As the colonists expanded their settlement further, the power tan felt their lands were threatened and conflicts arose again. In late 1609 an injury from a gunpowder explosion forced Smith to return to England for medical care. The English told the Pofartans that Smith was dead. Pocahontas believed that account, and hence afterwards stopped visiting Jamestown. Much later, she learned that he was living in England when she traveled there as the wife of John Rolfe. Capture Pocahontas' capture occurred in the context of the First Anglo-Power Tan War, a conflict between the Jamestown settlers and the Native Americans that began late in the summer of 1609. In the first years of war, the English took control of the James River both at its mouth and at the falls. Captain Samuel Argyll in the meantime pursued contacts with Native American groups in the northern portion of Pofartan's paramount chiefdom. The Patawameks who lived on the Potomac River were not always loyal to Powhatan and living. With them was a young English interpreter named Henry Spellman. In March 1613, Argyll learned that Pocahontas was visiting the Patawimic village of Passapatonzi, and living under the protection of the Wayro and Iapasis. With Spellman's help translating, Argyll pressured Iapasis to assist in Pocahontas' capture by promising an alliance with the English against the Pofartans. They tricked Pocahontas into boarding Argyll's ship, and held her for ransom demanding the release of English prisoners held by her father along with various stolen weapons and tools. Powhatan returned the prisoners but failed to satisfy the colonists with the number of weapons and tools he returned. A long standoff ensued, during which the English kept Pocahontas captive, during the year-long wait she was held at Henricus in modern-day Chesterfield County, Virginia. Little is known about her life there, although colonist Ralph Hamor wrote that she received extraordinary courteous usage. Linwood, Little Bear Custolo in a 2007 book asserted that Pocahontas was raped during this time, citing oral tradition handed down over four centuries. According to Helen Rowntree, other historians have disputed that such oral tradition survived, and instead argue that any mistreatment of Pocahontas would have gone against the interests of the English in the negotiations with Powhatan. A truce had been called. The Indians still far outnumbered the English and the colonists feared retaliation. At this time, the minister at Henricus Alexander Whitaker taught Pocahontas about Christianity and helped her 
to improve her English. Upon her baptism Pocahontas took the Christian name Rebecca. In March 1614 the standoff built up to a violent confrontation between hundreds of English and Powhatan men on the Pamunkey River at Pofartan's capital of Machcot. The English encountered a group of senior Native American leaders. The English allowed Pocahontas to talk to her countrymen. When Powhatan arrived Pocahontas reportedly rebuked him for valuing her less than old swords, pieces or axes and said that she preferred to live with the English who loved her. Possible First Marriage Current Mataponi tradition holds that Pocahontas' first husband was Kokum, brother of the Patawimic Wayroans Chapazors, and that Kokum was killed by the English after his wife's capture in 1613. Today's Patawimics believe that Pocahontas and Kokum had a daughter Karoki who was raised by the Patawimics after her father's death and her mother's abduction. However, Kokawim's actual identity, location, and even existence have been widely debated among scholars for centuries, with several historians arguing that the only mention of a Kokum in any English document is taken from a brief statement written c. 1616, by William Strachey in England that Pocahontas had been living married to a private captain called Kokum for two years. Since 1614 is certainly when she married John Rolfe and no other records even hint at any previous husband. It has accordingly been suggested that when Strachey wrote of the private captain called Kokum, he was mistakenly referring to Rolfe himself, with the reference being later misunderstood as one of Pofartan's officers. There was a Powhatan military rank called Coco Roars, sometimes translated Captain, and scholarly debate has also raged whether Strachey could have meant this as one of his famously divergent spellings as a gloss to Captain. In addition, the date of Strachey's original statement has been widely disputed by numerous authors attempting either to make the case or refute that Pocahontas had been previously married. If there was such a marriage, and Kokum was not murdered it likely ended according to Powhatan custom, when Pocahontas was captured. Marriage to John Rolfe During her stay in Henricus Pocahontas met John Rolfe whose English-born wife Sarah Hacker and child Bermuda Rolfe had died before he came to Virginia. Rolfe established a Virginia plantation Verena Farms where he successfully cultivated a new strain of tobacco. He was a pious man and agonized over the potential moral repercussions of marrying a heathen. In a long letter to the governor requesting permission to wed her, he expressed his love for Pocahontas and his belief that he would be saving her soul. He wrote that he was Pocahontas' feelings about Rolf are unknown. They were married on April 5th. 1614 by chaplain Richard Buck probably at Jamestown. For two years they lived at Rolf's plantation. Verena farms across the James River from Henricus. Their son Thomas was born on January 30, 1615. Their marriage created a climate of peace between the Jamestown colonists and Pofartan's tribes. This lasted for eight years and was called the Peace of Pocahontas. In 1615 Ralph Hamor wrote, England The Virginia Company of London had long seen one of its primary goals as the conversion of Native Americans to Christianity, with the conversion of Pocahontas and her marriage to an Englishman all of which helped bring an end to the First Anglo-Powhatan War the company saw an opportunity to promote investment. The company decided to bring Pocahontas to England as a symbol of the tamed New World Savage and the success of the Jamestown settlement. In 1616 the Rolfs traveled to England arriving at the port of Plymouth on June 12. They journeyed to London by coach accompanied by a group of about 11 other Pofartans including a holy man named Tomo Como. 
John Smith was living in London at the time and while Pocahontas was in Plymouth, she learned he was still alive. Smith did not meet Pocahontas but wrote to Queen Anne, the wife of King James urging that Pocahontas be treated with respect as a royal visitor. He suggested that if she were treated badly her present love to us and Christianity might turn to scorn and fury and England might lose the chance to rightly have a kingdom by her means. Pocahontas was entertained at various society gatherings. On January 5, 1617 she and Tomokomo were brought before the king at the old banqueting house in the Palace of Whitehall. At a performance of Ben Jonson's Mask The Vision of Delight, according to Smith, King James was some prepossessing that neither Pocahontas nor Tomokomo realized whom they had met until it was explained to them afterward. Although Pocahontas was not a princess in the context of power tan culture, the Virginia Company nevertheless presented her as a princess to the English public. The inscription on a 1616 engraving of Pocahontas made for the company reads, M-A-T-O-A-K-A-L's Rebecca F-I-L-I-A-P-O-T-E-N-T-I-S-S P-R-I-N-C-P-O-W-H-A-T-A-N-I-M-P-V-I-R-G-I-N-I-A-N-I-A-N-I-A-N-I-A-N-I-A-N-I-A-N-I-A-N-I-A-N-I-A-N-I-
And after this the peace of Pocahontas began to disintegrate. Pocahontas' funeral took place on March 21, 1617 in the parish of St. George Gravesend. Her grave is thought to be underneath the church's chancel though. Since that church was destroyed in a fire in 1727 her exact gravesite is unknown. Her memory is honored with a life-size bronze statue at Street George Church by William Ordway Partridge. Descendants and Legacy Pocahontas and her husband John Rolfe had one child Thomas Rolfe who was born in January 1615. The following year Thomas's parents travelled to London. Pocahontas and her father Chief Powhatan have many notable descendants including Edith Bowling Galt Wilson, American Western actor Glenn Strange astronomer and mathematician Percival Lowell and members of the first families of Virginia including George Wythe Randolph Admiral Richard E. Byrd and Virginia Governor Harry F. Byrd. In 1907 Pocahontas became the first Native American to be honored on a U.S. stamp. She was a member of the inaugural class of Virginia Women in History in 2000. In July 2015, the Pamunkey Indian tribe descendants of the Powhatan chiefdom of which Pocahontas was a member became the first federally recognized tribe in the state of Virginia. Cultural Representations After her death increasingly fanciful and romanticized representations of Pocahontas were produced in which Pocahontas and Smith were romantically involved. Contemporary sources substantiate claims of their friendship, not a romance. The first claim of their romantic involvement was in John Davis's Travels in the United States of America. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?